Hello and welcome back to the free online woodworking school. This is the final video in a however many part video series of making this shaker table. And in this video, we're gonna be focusing on sanding and getting it finished. I'm very excited, let's get going. So just a quick recap as to what stage this is currently at, but before then, little apology from me for any background noise you might hear. It's raining very heavily outside at the moment, but it makes it a perfect day for doing a job like this. Anyway, everything is joined together in here. We've got a veneered top that's covered in 0.6 millimeter thick decorative veneer. And we've got a double book match going on to create this amazing reflective pattern. We've routed some inlay in the edges. We've got mitres. We've got a drawer out the front here that's been dovetailed and fits really nicely in there. And in many areas, including the internal of the drawer, we've gone ahead and pre-finished it because they're gonna be a little bit harder to access now that the thing is assembled. So essentially what's left for us in this video is just to address all of the show faces and get it all looking really clean and consistent and um, most importantly not sand through this veneer on top which I have a history of two times I think and so I'm going to try and pass those lessons on to you to prevent you doing the same. So it's kind of hard to know where to start with something like this but I just recommend approaching it systematically bottom to top, top to bottom, whatever you fancy. The only thing I'll say now is if you're watching this series all the way through before making it, don't be tempted to sand this veneered area too early. One of the big mistakes I made when sanding through veneer like this was I'd get it laid down, I'd get the inlay in place, I'd get it looking all pretty and I'd think, oh, I'll just get that up to 120 and have a look and see how good my joints are and things. Sure enough, 120 comes around and then you go like, well, I'm already here. Might as well do 180, might as well do 240. Before you know it, you've got a sanded veneered top. The problem comes when you've done it early and when that compounds with someone as clumsy as me. Inevitably, it ends up getting a little bit of damage on it here and there. And that beautiful 240 grit finish needs to be sanded back again. And as you can imagine, this is where the issue starts. If you've gone through that whole process of getting it to that finish point and then you have to start it again, you're cutting it really fine with the veneer on top. And so really, you just wanna make sure that that is the last thing you do. You get it sanded, you put a finish on it, and then you're done with the project. So for me, if I'm gonna learn anything from my past experiences, I'm gonna start from bottom and work my way to the top. So I'm gonna start by getting the drawer out and everything and getting the top unbolted. I've just realized these bolts that I'm inserting into the top, I can actually use these to lift the top up so that I can finish both sides simultaneously. That's gonna be quite handy. I didn't think of that. So the first thing I want to do is get these faces of the legs cleaned up. And hooking it over the front of the bench like this is quite a good start because now I can just run a plane down there, get that all flat, all smooth, and then I can also attack that with some sandpaper. These inside faces are gonna be a bit more tricky, but these have already been planed when we did the tapering stage. And so really they just need a bit of sanding. So this will probably take a bit of a bespoke solution to whatever you're working with. For me, I've been able to get a clamp through here and then clamp to the inside of that split top there. So now super fine cut and we'll just go along and take a few passes from these legs until they're all cleaned up. So those are all cleaned up now. Got a few patches of very minor tear out in places, but I was able to tame the majority of it. So I'm gonna keep that plane set aside for the time being, because I still need to go around the top and sort of plane this lipping to tidy up the edges and things, but we'll address that later. Because now that's done, these are all pre-finished, insides are done, so. I'll start sanding these legs. When sanding narrow surfaces like this, I tend to prefer to use a hard block. That way it keeps the edges nice and square rather than use one that's sort of soft like this or a cork block that can potentially start pillowing over the edges. Obviously we'll soften them after they're all sanded just to take that sharp edge off, but I don't want any minor radiuses on it because it just takes away from the sort of crispness of the finished piece. The other thing we'll do while we're here is just put a little chamfer on the bottom of all of the legs because what this will do is help prevent any breakout from occurring if this table is dragged along the ground and one of these edges catches on something, I don't know. By putting a little chamfer on like that just helps strengthen things a bit and just helps protect that edge. And I did actually pre-finish this area, but we've got a little bit of unevenness from when these were glued together. So I am just gonna give this area a once over. 
not too much. Clearly, we're not going to be able to get in too close to the legs, but addressing the majority of this area should make it feel a bit nicer. Might actually go to the soft block for this, just to help get it to follow those undulations. Right, and there's actually not many other areas to do other than that. We've done all the legs, chamfered the bottoms, all of that's pre-finished. So um, yeah, I'm gonna start working my way up the grits now. We'll do 180, 240, and that's generally all it needs for walnut. So um, yeah, let's get that done. Okay, so now we'll just knock these sharp corners off of these. I like to use the highest grip for this, so 240 in this case. A couple of strokes at 45 degrees. And then whatever half that is, 22.5 either way. And just a couple of passes like that is all you need to take that sharp edge off. You can run your finger up that all day now, but it still has that nice crisp look to it that we're wanting to maintain. So a few at 45 degrees. This sandpaper is quite blunt now, and I can't be asked to go get another one. So four that way. Couple at 22 and a half, sorted. Okay, so with the main table done and feeling all nice around the corners, I actually did go back and hit the sides with a bit of 240 grit just to get rid of some minor scratches and things. It was pre-finished and so I've kind of scratched through that, but it's not too much of an issue. The main point in me pre-finishing these was so that I went through the 120 and the 180 stages before it got locked between these legs because going back with a bit of 240 is really not much of an issue. Whereas if I needed to do the whole process of 120, 180, 240 between these legs, it would have been a nightmare. But anyway, that's done. Next, I'm gonna move on to the drawer. With this, it's already at a really nice plain finish on the sides, so I'm probably not gonna scrub those down too much. I think just 180 and 240 should be fine. Back definitely needs going over. The front, again, doesn't need too much because we did plane that earlier in the series. Just needs a little scrub over. I've also got a few very small gaps around the dovetails here, which I wanna get rid of. And these are small enough just for the old glue and dust trick. But if they are anything larger than half a millimeter or a millimeter or something, generally what I do is split a piece of end grain off some walnut and just wedge it in the crack because once it's sanded and plain flush it's almost unnoticeable so for this i'm using the soft block because it's wide enough to not really cause any issues with pillowing and we're going straight to 180 on this i think right now comes the nerve wracking bit because we're going to start sanding this veneer top. So we're going to take this all the way up to 240 grit, starting at 120. So 120, 180, 240. And I'm going to start on the bottom, because that way when we flip it over and start working on the top, if the bottom gets burnished or scratched or whatever, it doesn't really matter because it's the underside. And also, apart from anything, gives us a bit of practice with sanding veneer, because we, uh, we don't want to go through this. No promises. It's been a while, but <laughs> we'll... Uh, whew, I need to vacuum this. Um, We'll see what we can do. Now, because I'm doing this with a random orbit sander, clearly I'm gonna need extraction for it. But what I'm gonna do is turn down the suction. And this is something that I was taught, don't, don't take this as gospel, but by turning this down slightly, it stops the sander being sucked down as hard into the surface below and prevents it from digging in too much. Besides, it's such fine dust, we don't need full suction on this anyway. It's not like the chips are heavy. And I know that this and my sander are pretty efficient with regards to dust collection, so I trust that setting. And so now what we're gonna do is with a soft pencil, really important you do this with a soft pencil, not a hard one, is just scribble over this surface really lightly so then we can see where we have sanded and where we haven't. It's pretty obvious anyway on these first ones, but as you start going up the grits, it's gonna be very difficult to see. And the reason we don't use a hard pencil for this is because it's perfectly possible for a hard pencil to put scratches across the grain and you're gonna be chasing your tail trying to sand those out and end up sanding too far. So soft pencil, really light over the surface and we can now very clearly see what we've sanded and what we haven't. As for the speed on the sander itself, I would say this is mostly personal preference. It all depends on how fast you move it across the surface. I'm gonna have it not quite full speed, but just dial back a bit because I know I can go across this relatively quickly. But if you tend to sand a bit slower and steadier then you could turn this down slightly more i am expecting to get a little bit of veneer breakthrough around these um, threaded inserts because they've sort of lifted up the mdf below perhaps i didn't drill the um, pilot holes wide enough or something so we'll probably get a bit of exposure around here but it'll all be covered later as long as we don't do this main area so 
So we're going super steady with that and it looks like we're flush around all of the edges. There's a tiny bit of discoloration from glue up here and here, but it's so little, I'm pretty sure the um, 180 and 240 grit should get that. We've also got a small bit of discoloring here as well, but again, it's being removed quite rapidly. So I think we could do that with the uh, 180 grit. So get that changed over. Again, really light scribble all over. Now this is where it's really important we follow these scribbles because on that first pass, with the 120 grit. We're both looking to remove the scribbles, but also any imperfections in the surface. So you might end up hitting some areas more than others, but now we're going for a consistent coverage all over. Looking good so far. So now 240 grit, same thing. Again, just really light passes with this. Don't put any scratches in the wood. There you go, that is one veneered and sanded surface. Fortunately, we didn't go through to the MDF below and it looks pretty damn good. So before flipping this over and working on this side, I'm just gonna hand sand these chamfers, get those all up to 240 grit as well as the sides. And then we can call the bottom completely done. So this is uh, 240 grit I'm doing now. So now with this block, we'll just go over and split the difference between each of those angles. Just one stroke or two to knock off the somewhat sharp edge. Again, always doing this with the finer grit so that you don't pillow edges too much. Right, I'm gonna make a, uh, a pact with you now. If I sand through this, we're just gonna go for a solid wood top on this table, right? <laughs> I'm not making this again. In fact, we'll just say it's intentional. I'm showing you what not to do when sanding a veneered top. Here we go. 120 grit on ear defenders. Um, and now we pray to the veneering gods. So with the top done, the table done, the drawer done, and I've double checked that I've sanded all of the edges except that one. It's always these little bits that I miss. So now that all three parts are sanded, I'm gonna give this whole area a clean, a vacuum. We'll also get in the table and around the top and clear all that with a vacuum bristle brush. And then we'll get set up for a bit of finishing. So again, I'm gonna try and be systematic with this. Probably start from the bottom and just work my way down or up, I guess. And then we'll finish it up by flipping over, getting a layer of finish on this top surface and then let that dry. And as I did with the pre-finishing, I'm using Osmo, which is a hard wax oil for this. So it's both got oil and wax in it, which in theory both soaks into the grain due to the oil part of it and the wax part of it will sit on the grain. Just need to make sure to give it a good mix beforehand. And I'm gonna be applying it with some of these non-abrasive pads, which I really like for applying this stuff. So I'll stick a link to them in the description if you're interested and a link to the Osmo will be there as well. It comes in a few different levels of shine, whether you want a gloss, satin or matte finish. I think for this, yeah, I'm going for a matte finish. Shows up less imperfections, doesn't it? So it's always a winner. Table done. There's a little bit of excess to wipe off on that, but we'll sort that in a minute. Next, the drawer. With this, I think I might do all the sides, top and bottom, but just leave this back face unfinished, at least for this first coat, because then I can just leave it drying like that and everything else has a coat applied to it. So let's get our bolts ready. So once we finish this surface, we can put those in, flip it over, and then it will raise that off the um, table. Again, I'll just make sure to spread this really thin so we don't end up accidentally flooding these holes. just buff this off now. I'd normally use cotton rags for this, but blue roll it is today. <laughs> Such a tradesman. I'm really not, I'm a poser. Ignore that. Tell you what, I actually quite like that as a buffing material. Yeah, interesting. Always learning. Right, here we go. Let's do a big old blob, be rude not to. Oh, it just never gets old. Tell you what though, this black inlay is not very good. Come on, go darker. So I've got this weird gray color going up here. Oh well, it's not too noticeable. Bit of blue roll. 
Now I'll just do circular motions with this because if we do straight strokes like that, this burr might end up showing streaks. So we want to kind of randomize the pattern as much as we can on this. This um, streakiness is due to the wax content of this finish. It shouldn't be as prominent when it's dried, but we might as well prevent it as much as we can. <laughs> that looks so good. Apart from that bit of inlay there, that, it, yeah. Uh, Mm. So that's the top done. We'll just go around and buff the rest off now. And I sort of tried to do a first stage buffing with this. And then once we've done the whole thing, I'll take these gloves off and just go over once more to make sure we don't have any sort of pools in places. Because this Osmo and hard wax oil in general can go really sticky if you leave it thick while it's drying. You don't need to do any of this sort of waiting for it to harden and then buff it off. Really, you can just put it on, wipe it off straight away and build up the thickness and the depth over subsequent coats rather than put it all on at once because it's really, it's just horrible when it doesn't go right. 